Welcome back to the podcast. It's your host, John Scardina. I am so excited for this episode. You know me, you know that I love technologies, especially given my history on the national strike team and using those technologies and been trying to be on the forefront of that. I have a very special opportunity today to talk to Richard Danforth. He is the CEO of Genesis. They just went through a big rebranding and I'm a big branding guy. If you've seen the previous podcast about branding for emergency management. He also expanded their scope of their company to really be an all-inclusive uh, communications, specifically for emergency management organization. Really excited to talk to him. He is standing by right now. So let me pull him on the podcast. Richard, welcome to the show. Thanks very much. Glad to be here. Great. So uh, let's talk about uh, you specifically. You're the CEO of this amazing company. I've met a lot of your staff, all really great people. In terms of organizing your company from the get-go, kind of like that Genesis background, can you just give our, our listeners just like a background of what Genesis is and, and kind of your approach to that? Genesis is a company that's been around for, well, actually, its history actually begins back in the 1960s in Australia. Hmm. Um, we... That company, it was called Genesis, uh, was a big data analytics and mapping company. Uh, at their height, they had offices in uh, New Zealand, Australia, Madrid, the United States, and the UK. Uh, we wow. bought that company in, in January of 2018, a software company in Madrid named Genesis, and then adopted their name. Hmm. Uh, they brought, um, they brought uh, software development capabilities that we didn't have. They also brought a marquee customer, the country of Australia, which after the fires in 2009, where over 100 people died, there was a public outcry that the government didn't do enough. Yeah, I remember um, that. So we, uh, uh, we won a contract in Australia to provide a location-based two-way SMS so the emergency management folks can look at a map, a GUI. Uh, yeah. Our software will locate all of the phones uh, without any opt-in. It'll allow the emergency management people to draw a polygon. We'll tell them how many phones are in that uh, area and where they are. And then we'll manage the two-way SMS. And then the emergency management people can look in real time as the phones react to the message. So that hmm. marquee, we're in the emergency communication business. Uh, and that's where it started, largely through that acquisition. The the targeted... Um... The, the drawing the polygons is really interesting to me right now because about three weeks ago in our county, we had at 11 o'clock at night on a Friday, um, tornado sirens go off in our area. And, you know, me being me, I pull up the map and at one, it wasn't a warning. It was a watch and it was only a watch for the very southern part of the county. And I, I saw some of the emergency managers there and I said, hey. Like there's just some phenomenal technology out there where you can actually target different areas. And I was asking them basic questions like the difference between a watch and a warning and when you should send out your, your information. And well, one of the most fascinating things in the conversation is that they didn't know you could do targeting areas for a mass notifications. And so my very first call out is I'm going to share this with my county and say, hey, there's this product out there that can target. So my four-year-old and two-year-old don't get woken up from a tornado warning when there's no tornado warning in our area and also, you know, help that public trust from that perspective of the house too. So talk to me more about like um, the, the drawing the polygons and kind of the future of that. Like how do you manage all the, I, I would say like spectrum of phones from people who are still, you know, the 80 year old with a flip phone, all through maybe that Gen Z who has the latest and greatest. How do you actually manage that as a company? So let me just take a step back for just a moment. So uh, mass notification to us is delivered by the Genesis Protect platform. Mm -hmm. uh, that platform has multiple communication channels uh, to your phone, to your desktop, to your laptop, to acoustic device speakers, uh, digital signage, uh, social media. Uh, so to answer your question, how do you get to everybody? You use as many communication channels as the platform has. Uh, yes. And ours has a ton. Uh, our Genesis Protect platform does use zone-based planning. So when we sell our mass notification system, 
uh, part of the feature sets includes we will if it was your county, for example, hmm. uh, we have software that will look at your county geographically. Uh, look at how many people live there, look at egress routes, look at what's on the ground for potential burn. Uh, and then we'll come up with a geographic uh, representation down to geographic zones uh, in your county. That allows emergency management people to, for, let's choose a fire, for example, to roll up on a fire, roll out their tablet, open up our platform, uh, place a pin on where the fire is beginning, and then run a model that's provided on our platform. What's this fire going to look like in an hour and two hours and five hours? Uh, right. And then run it, look at the GUI, and those areas, those very specific areas, uh, then get a, a, a note, a, 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 a message directly to the phone if you're in that area of interest. It also right. enables emergency people to uh, alert the other zones around to be ready, just right. in case. So... The directly to your phone is one communication channel of, of several that I've mentioned a moment ago. So this is where and those zones. I should say this: the zones, the zones are really designed uh, for an evacuation. How do you get people out safely without clogging the road systems? Uh, right. And as you mentioned a moment ago, without making such a broad emergency alert that people lose faith in it, uh, they say, "Ah, that's you know, we get too many of those, and they don't pay any attention to it." So it builds credibility. We also have a, a, a public facing website. So at any time, uh, any citizen, you, uh, you can log on to it right now uh, and look at the status. And if uh, that's the source of true information, all the information that's on that comes directly from the emergency management people. So that's they can cool. show you where road closures are. They can show you where food, water, shelter, uh, medical uh, help is. And it's a, you know, it's a, it's a source of true information. And in, as you know, in chaotic situations, uh, finding where the truth is, is often, can, often can be challenging. Real quick, we're gonna pause for this week's Disaster Tough endorsements. The L3 Harris Extreme 400P radio solves problems and is specifically designed for emergency services. How do we know? We field tested it with medical, urban search and rescue and collapse and confined structures. This radio is amazingly tough. Check out the L3 Harris Extreme 400P radio at L3Harris.com right now. How do you spell Doberman Emergency Management? EOP, OEP, HVA, HMP, Thyra, TTX, Drone, PDA. Whenever you need an expert, Doberman Emergency Management field experts are there for support. Contact an expert at DobermanEMG.com today. Okay, let's jump back in. Well, there's actually like a phenomenal call out uh, the challenges that emergency managers face and first responders face. One of the problems that I've been trying to address on the podcast is, you know, I'll talk to somebody like yourself, for example, Genesis. You're really talking about a comprehensive, like basically a one stop shop for all things supporting communications in a disaster. And as you're going through, I bet you almost anything that my audience is like, oh, I didn't know it could do that. I didn't know it could do that. I wish I could have that. I wish I could have this capability. But when, once the application is provided, on the other hand, uh, on the other side of the coin is you have this incredible technology. But then I look at Maui and they don't use tech. That, I don't know who, who their provider is, but they just didn't do anything during the wildfires. And so the fear of I'm going to use this too much is also matched sometimes. And I hate to call it my own field here with a competency where they get the technology, but they don't use it. And I've been trying to figure out in my field to encourage people to embrace technology, to make their lives easier. And when they don't, that's when chaos happens. Do you find that to be true with, people implementing technologies or as a technologies, how do you overcome the, the fact that like, Hey, we're giving you this amazing thing, but you got to use it. Do you have that problem or do you not really see that problem? We, we absolutely see it uh, around the world. And I, you know, I, I have a slightly different view of it and I think, uh, and I'm not going to speak directly to Maui, but it's uh, the world is becoming an increasingly more dangerous place, whether it's man-made disasters or social unrest, pandemics, plumes, fires, floods, uh, tsunamis, and it's getting worse. Um, and you don't have, 
frequently you run into people in emergency management, but also in uh, county management or state management that don't comprehend that it could happen to them. Um, yeah. And we've got examples of that all over the place. Uh, yes. a, a good friend of mine lives in the state of Vermont. The state of Vermont had a horrific flood. You would never think that that would happen in the middle of the state of Vermont, and it did. You mentioned Maui, um, apparently ill-prepared for what happened. And the technology exists to communicate to citizens and visitors without opt-in, uh, right down to the point where the last device burns down or gets torn down. Um, yes. So it, it, the technology exists. I think there's still um, a lack of, of urgency because it can't happen to me, I think is there. Yeah, we use, uh, we. you know, funny enough, I've been addressing that a little bit and going to different stakeholders who are non-emergency managers because of the scope of the podcast and working with different sponsors, I, I now get to have the opportunity to talk to people who are non-EM. And I'll say, hey, what do you think the words all hazards plan mean to you? What do you think resiliency means to you? What do you think like um, whole community? And honestly, and these are normal words that I use in my industry, but other people hear doomsday prepper. They hear uh, only bounce back. They hear, well, why do you need to define whole community versus just community? And what I've realized is, again, I'm, I can dress my side of the house. Emergency managers, we need to get better at communicating to our constituents, whoever they may be, whether it's uh, I work with professional you know, stadiums for uh, sports, whether it's the, the, the people who come into the patrons or through a county, state even, that, hey, you need to start using language that makes sense to the end user and not just internally. And one of the things is, like just following the English definition of the word, we don't really do that very well in our industry. And so this is just a, a funny call out to say, hey, we're talking to somebody on the other side of the house here who's come up with a phenomenal technology. And I, I keep seeing this amazing brand behind you. If you're watching the video right now, they did this rebranding. I want to talk about that. But obviously, Genesis cares about messaging, not just like the emergency message, but like what your company um, uh, pushes out there as the message. If you're going to talk about from a branding perspective of what you want Genesis to portray, I will give you my thoughts of what I thought your very cool looking logo looks like. But what is the message that Genesis provides like as a, as a brand, right? That would be my question to you. So we rebranded to reintroduce Genesis to the marketplace. So if you look at what we have from a software platform perspective, we were selling mass notification software. We were selling the zone-based planning and execution. And we were selling mass notification hardware systems. Hmm. Uh, and we had lots of SKUs and it was an alphabet soup of, of acronyms, which we all tend to get into. Um, what we did when we rebranded was reintroduced Genesis reintroduced or, or introduced the Genesis Protect platform. So the platform has all the functionality of mass notification and zone planning combined, as well as uh, the uh, acoustic devices, uh, which as I mentioned a moment ago, is a key element in a, in, a, in a holistic emergency management system. Those acoustic devices, are, um, the, the comms channel is via satellite and it's renewable power on batteries. So it will work without network power or cellular network or internet. Mm. Uh, in the case of you know fires and floods, frequently the power on the network and the cellular network are down. Um, yeah. So we wanted to introduce this as a holistic platform. Uh, we saw that coming from industry. Uh, uh, counties in this state of California, like Riverside, have bought everything we had, Berkeley, Almeda County, Berkeley, the University of Berkeley, all have bought everything we have, uh, and it's, it's, it's happened elsewhere as well. So the purpose of rebranding was to introduce Genesis Protect re uh, to reimagine what mass notification is. It's not simply sending 
a message to your phone or lighting off a siren. Uh, it's much more targeted uh, and, and much more direct. Fantastic. You you use three kind of key elements there that I want to call you out on in a very good way. The first one is the word protect. In our industry, after 2004, with Department of Homeland Security, and this is really for the audience, I'm sure you know this, is uh, our we started including the word protect in, or protection as part of the disaster life cycle or really the, the preparedness life cycle, but you don't prepare to respond. You actually respond at some point. That's a whole other thing. But the word protection, people started using the word incorrectly and they started thinking, oh, I need to carry a weapon on me. But when I use the word protection, like the English mm -hmm. dictionary, you know, when you put people in a shelter from a hurricane, you're not shooting the hurricane. You're protecting them against the wind and rain. And so I think it's fantastic that Genesis is using the word protection because you're talking about targeted notifications for evacuation or getting ready or otherwise. That's absolutely the perfect word. And I'm not trying to blow smoke. I, I really do think like I'm a words guy. I like I like thinking about the um, the history of that. John, if I can interrupt you for a second, I want to yeah. point out that the platform, a big element of the platform is planning mm. and exercises. So uh, on our platform, uh, emergency management folks can pick a, pick an, an issue, a flood, a fire, a plume, and then run a simulation. What's that going to look like? And then run a, a, a traffic uh, simulation and say, well, how are the roads going to be looked? How are they going to be impacted when we do this? And then, okay, well, it's going to take two hours to get out of that area. Well, and the, the threat's going to be there in an hour. Okay, what do I do? So yeah. it allows the emergency management people the time and the platform to practice. Uh, and they have a whole library of things that they can do from former fires, for example, here in California, what happened uh, to just making it up as they go along. Uh, mm. So I think that's a key element of the Genesis Protect platform is the planning. Fantastic. Again, like you're using the word correctly, which I love. And it's it's it takes so many different elements of that. When I think of protecting myself against a hurricane, I look at the mitigation of that. And if you don't have proper training, you don't look at your data. I literally last week I did an episode for uh, schools and universities. And the very first thing I called out was with a GIS based hazard vulnerability assessment and uh, you, you can use that for all your training and like be able to actually create exercises and planning that are based off geospatial. So here's the second element that I'm calling you out on is the actual icon on your logo. Tell me if I'm wrong. It tells me two things. It makes me think of a topographic map. So therefore targeted geospatially and sound waves. Was I right? I think or the other thing I'd give you is evacuation. So Ooh, it, it, like it, it has all right. those connotations and it also, and it also might look like the aperture of a camera too. So it's, Ooh, uh, I like that. Okay. Yeah. That's very cool. We did a podcast episode back in February, or March, where I brought designers on and we talked about the lack of branding for emergency management. Like if you look at emergency management history, there's the civil defense, which we're not civil defense anymore. And then there's like the three star EM swoosh which I've been called out a little bit. Okay, I got to be nice to the person who came up with it, but it doesn't convey anything. And then we did a rebranding as well as an organization. Like we have Doberman that does plans and training, but the readiness lab is supposed to be about the community. And we wanted to come up with an icon that says all things. It's It looks like two quotes, like two people are talking and um, it's cyclical. So the disaster life cycle and it looks kind of like a hazard symbol. Um, and so I love thinking about the details of that and the imagery that it pro provides people. Simplicity means everything to me right now um, because our industry really does need better branding. But going back to the part of our brand, uh, part of our Please. brand is uh, plan, act and optimize. So you can see the th Ooh. three sections of that logo that is That's plan, awesome. act, optimize. So. There's That's a fantastic. lot of stuff in that symbol. And why not, right? It, it, and yet it's not overly complicated. I think this is kind of a cool call out for our audience. Like, hey, you can look at Genesis as, you know, literally you can just go to their website and look at their logos to see what we're talking about. But it, it doesn't have to be overly complicated. You didn't put 
15 different hazard symbols on your icon for a reason, right? It's It port portrays multiple different things. The third element that I really like and, and that you called out earlier, or that I, I guess we're doing this call out segment, we usually don't, but is, um, is like the organizational style. You can be flexible and still understand your own scope, right? You had all these different individual systems and now you're saying, hey, we're rebranding in order to help people understand that we can do a lot of different things and to, to match your needs. Emergency managers have that problem right now. We do so many different things. It's like scope creep to the max that we dilute ourselves so much to the end user that people sometimes don't know what we do. So when you're thinking about like uh, from a leadership perspective, if you can help out the emergency manager in the field and say, hey, how do you deal with scope creep? And how do you combine different tasks while simultaneously still being somehow flexible? How do you figure out what those guidelines are? It's different on each community, whether it's a sled or enterprise, uh, but both sled and enterprise have the same problem uh, when it comes to emergency notification, emergency management, and the planning, the acting, and the optimizing. Uh, if you look at a, a large county, for example, John, it, it typically would start with everybody knows mass notification. Almost everybody has some kind of a mass notification system. Uh, right. We have to educate the community on what else is available, you know, for obviously from our company, but in industry and gets down to the zone planning and the acoustic devices. And frequently, as I mentioned, Riverside County. You know, they bought all three of the things we had. We didn't do a very good job initially at trying to sell them the, the holistic emergency management system. We had people out selling our mass notification software and our zone-based software and our hardware systems. Mm -hmm. uh, so some of it was on us. And, and that's why I said the rebranding was to reintroduce the company with that single platform perspective. And frequently, mm -hmm. um, we see scope creep but it's because the, the either the enterprise or the uh, the sled customer wants more. They want uh, uh, virtual panic buttons. They want acoustic devices inside. They want acoustic devices outside. They want zone planning and an automobile manufacturing uh, customer we have, uh, which has a huge campus in South Carolina with dozens of buildings. Well, a fire threat, an active shooter threat, a chemical spill, a medical event that will require different reactions and how you communicate to the people in that in that business and it also is a confluence of enterprise and uh, state and local government in situations like that uh, you frequently can have police and fire and and emergency personnel show up because of there's an event how do you communicate with them how do you communicate in an effective manner that they know where the building is what the threat is and all of that is available on our platform. So I see a confluence of uh, enterprise and sled occurring right now. Uh, we have, uh, you mentioned the sports team. We have a, 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 the, the Boston Red Sox, Fenway Park, hmm. and they have our mass notification software and they have our QR code based emergency uh, buttons. Um, and they're in a community in the Fenway section of Boston and they deal with the businesses, the retail, the everything that's going on around Fenway Park. A problem that occurs in, in a restaurant that's adjacent to Fenway Park will and can and will affect Fenway Park. A water main break in the street to Fenway Park will affect everybody in the neighborhood. 100%. Uh, so there has to be a common operating picture. There has to be a quick and easy and simple way to share data. And that's what our platform does. Gosh, talk about the mic drop moment. Um, so that's where everybody's going to be like, oh, okay, now I'm going to buy it. Um, which, uh, I, you know, you guys didn't pay me for, and I have to say this for the audience, you guys didn't pay me to say this. I, I'm happy to endorse what you're doing. I, everything that I've seen uh, from your team and from the products, I think it's fantastic. I really do. And I think it's okay. Thank you know, you. I'm in, yeah, I'm in the private sector, so I get to say what I want now. And I'll be honest on that. And so... Um, I think Genesis has some really great things from the professional stadium perspective. 
Uh, the readiness lab provides literally the only counterterrorism training for professional stadiums globally, actually. And we've been working with the Department of Homeland Security to provide, uh, like, you know, DHS Safety Act to make sure that the stadiums are getting the right kind of training. And um, I, I think it would be fun to have a conversation offline to talk about how do we make sure that that this stuff happens. But that's a little bit off, off topic. From, from the last kind of segment here, I want to talk about really your team. I'm going to call her out. I promise you I would call her out. Samantha Bell. She is just one of the most amazing workers I've ever seen. She has figured it out. She knows how to work hard, and she's incredibly approachable. I saw her at an event. Uh, trade shows for me are kind of a nightmare. I don't do trade shows from my end because... Wow. Uh, but it's so it's hard to get my attention. She got my attention and she explained your products in such an easy and approachable way that I was like, tell me more. And from a guy who I stole from one of your competitors, he was excited about it and he was a believer in their other product. And so she was able to flip the script on him very quickly. And, and, and as I expanded that network from Samantha to Tammy and, um, and to Jason really in particular, there was a consistency of people who not only legitimately believes in your product, but are probably leaders in their own right. From a culture perspective, helping out the emergency services per field, develop leaders of in their own organizations. What is your view on leadership? And really more importantly, how have you figured out the secret to finding incredible people? Culture is a is a the most significant issue I can help contribute to. Uh, John, uh, the, we have a very collaborative group. We have people all over the world. Um, uh, we have an open and honest, uh, 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 intelligent communication. It's it's a, you know it's hardworking people that have a passion for the the industry that we work in. What they come to do every day is to develop hardware and software solutions that help keep people alive. And they have a passion for that, whether they're the software engineer or Sam setting up a, a, a trade show, I think, that you met her at. But it, yeah. it runs through everybody. It's the it's the workforce that's building the hardware. It's the, the software engineers building the, the software platform. It's our accounting people. It's our marketing people. It's, it's a shared passion. And that makes a huge difference. I like the passion of keeping people alive because so many people, especially in, in the, the, the way that you and I are very much the same, is that we are not pulling the survivor out of the mud directly. We are helping on the strategic level of that. And for people to keep that passion of like, oh, I am helping, even if it's from afar, that's very hard to create. And I think it's um, wise. If you were going to give maybe three potential ideas, and I'm just putting you on the spot here. Three ideas to help uh, define culture in an organization. What would be those three tips? Honesty, uh, open and, and frequent dialogue, and respect. Man, the mic drop moments. It's interesting you didn't dive into like incentives or you didn't dive into um, like all the fluff stuff. That's interesting you started with honesty. Yeah, um, we all get paid. We all make a living. Um, if you're fortunate enough to come to work every day uh, and do something because it's saving people's lives, that passion is why you come to work. It's not yeah. for what you're getting paid. Obviously, we all need to get paid. But um, sure. if you're coming to work just for a paycheck, uh, that's not the kind of person we want. That's right. My team is very small. They're all over the U.S., Vermont, uh, Atlanta, Florida, Portland. We have two people in the U.K. right now. We have some people in California. And I have an office here, and I have an intern and a sales rep in this office, but everybody else is spread around. And what I found for myself, and maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong, is I don't believe in potential anymore. And I don't believe that potential is related to experience. I think people, if they have high integrity, like, you know, for personal moral code, and uh, they are ambitious and they're intelligent, 
then they can kind of do anything. And I've tried very hard to find people who have high moral code, intelligent and ambitious. And I don't really have to get in their way too much. They, more importantly, they come up to me and unapologetically say, Hey boss, we're going to, we're going to do it this way. And I'm like, yeah, I trust you. And if they're wrong, I'll, I'll say, Hey, like, let's, let's, let's talk about that. But more often than not, they correct me. And it's, um, it's a kind of a, a refreshing atmosphere to what I've experienced in the past. Yeah. It's the same thing here. I mean, the subject matter experts is usually not me. Um, so we have to rely on the people, uh, that, that work in the company to, to do their job and give them the tools and the resources they need to successfully accomplish their job. Absolutely. Um, okay. So we're basically out of time here. So I need, I get to, to do the thing where give us your official pitch, where can people find Genesis and, uh, what can they take away from Genesis that they're going to reach out to you guys? You can find Genesis on the web. It's G E N A S Y S as you say, um, we are redefining emergency management. We are redefining how people stay safe and communicated with in times of emergency. We are trying to put together, we have put together a platform that makes it easy for the emergency management folks to communicate rapidly and efficiently uh, and a, a, an easy button for the people to actually receive those messages. You know, the I mentioned the passion and saving lives. In, in California and recently in Maui, you see these fires. They travel at, at a mile a minute. The firefighters can't catch up with that. So we have to uh, get people notified in out of harm's way in, in as fast a pace as we possibly can. The current process that happens in the manual process is a, a map rolled out in the back of a pickup truck and grease pencils and HF radios. It takes hours. It takes hours. Our platform can do it in minutes. And that saves people's lives. Predictive analysis is the future. If I do nothing besides your team, uh, honestly, I would be happy to say I support Genesis, but really the fact that you're creating something that's comprehensive, that can also be flexible and get ahead of it. I have been behind it in a disaster and it was brutal and you don't get ahead of it once you get behind and we need to move into predictive analysis. We need to get people out faster. And you've talked about all those things. Richard, I'm I'm really honored to have you on this podcast and, and thank you for talking to me. And I really do hope people look up your company and learn more about what you have to offer. Terrific. Thank you very much. All right, everybody. If you got something out of this podcast, which you should have, uh, you can definitely find Genesis. We're also going to put their website in our show notes. If you got something out of this, I got to do my thing. Uh, remember, five star and subscribe. Comment on social media. Tag Genesis. If you have a question, if you wanted to be a user, if you were, were a user, if you want to come back and you're hearing about some of this stuff, we would love to be able to see that conversation. We want that conversation to happen. If you're one of the 100% of emergency managers who has seen communications on your after action report, we just talked for 30 minutes all about ways to overcome that. I truly believe that we can take communications off the after action report. We can do it right. We've been interviewing people who are doing it right. So make sure you check out Genesis. Make sure you are involved in this conversation on communications. And let's get over this as a field. And with that, we hope to see you next week. And we'll see you on the next one. Peace. <laughs>